Hey guys, Frank, Connecticut Stormwater Authority. We're here starting a job in Greenwich. We're about a day and a half underway. Things are moving along quickly and I wanna just orientate you to the house, what we're doing here and how things look around this property. Hey guys, it's Frank at Connecticut Stormwater Authority, and this is a drainage trench specifically for the Coltec stormwater system. We've dug our depths to meet the Coltec 330 XL HD chamber. It's one of their larger chambers, it's 30 and one half inches tall, and this is how deep we have to go to accommodate a gallery of these drains. What we do specifically with the water that enters those chambers is called infiltration. And that means we're injecting it back into the earth. The way to do that first and foremost is to make sure you have a very clean and pristine system. Nothing can get inside except water. We don't want dirt, we don't want debris, we don't want leaves. We only want clean water inside and that'll make this system last a long time and perform at its optimal peak performance. You see a little bit of drainage stone in the corner here. We're still backfilling. We're waiting on a new truck of uh, stone. They just ran out to pick up some more. We have that, that bed at 12 inches depth. That's pretty substantial. That's, that drainage stone holds water in and of itself. Once we get enough to accommodate 12 inches of base, we then level it out, make it nice and level and smooth, and drop our chambers on. And they all interlock. In this particular trench, we're going to have 10 of them. The other critical element on a system is non-woven geotextile fabric. What is that? Well, basically it's a very heavy duty filter fabric, very robust and thick, and that allows us to keep debris out, keep dirt out, keep the drainage stone clean. It also helps keep tree roots and any kind of uh, rootage that's drawing towards the water source out of our trench. We don't want them in here. We don't want them not gnarling up and knotting up inside of our chambers, clean and pristine. So this filter fabric is critical. We see this missing quite often in a lot of systems that are done wrong, not in ours. We use a ton of it. When we're done with our chamber install, we backfill, we put six inches of cover on top of those chambers, and then we add more filter fabric and it encapsulates the entire system. Keeps everything clean. Then we'll add some more stone on top of the fabric to keep it down and then we'll add some native soil to backfill and level it out with grade. I'm just about six feet tall. You can see how deep this trench is. This is a swimming pool. It's incredible how much earth we move to create these systems, but I wanted to get inside so you can visualize just how big these trenches are. All right, we're over here in the driveway. and What I wanted to show you, I took delivery of these about a week ago, are these precast concrete trench drains. These are massive. This is our preference. We use these oversized, heavy-duty trench drains as often as possible, especially on big houses where it absolutely requires it. The driveway has a lot of square footage. The driveway gets inundated with water. And at you know, freak flash floods, a lot of water gets directed at the garages. In that case, you can't really use these small, undersized drainage DIY products that I see maybe on the shelf at Home Depot. Do they do something? Yes, they're more so made for around walkways or 
small uh, hardscape features in the backyard, that type of deal. These are the real deal. These are massive. These are six feet long. They weigh thousands of pounds. We need a heavy uh, you know, excavator to pick these up and move them into place. And they're also gigantic. Inside diameter here, inside measurement, six and a half inches wide at the base. And then it flares up to nine inches at the top. But the depth is what's critical. The depth is 14 and a half, 15 inches in depth. This holds an ex expansive amount of water, especially in the case of surface runoff. And then these all get connected together. We use hydraulic cement, patch everything so they're seamless, and send everything out. This is an end, an end unit into a drain. We're going to use a six inch drain, massive drain. All that water is going to flow right out of here fast and get it away from the house. That's the strategy. Uh, to put these in, it's a pretty major undertaking. We saw cut the asphalt. We pick all of that out neatly so we have a nice clean seam. And then we bring in the machine or even hand dig with shovels and picks and jackhammers to loosen up the soil below the asphalt and get our depth. In this case, this is 20 inches and we go probably 22 inches so that we have a little bit of space to play and work and get pitch with our, our units. And um, we let, might lay this in a mortar bed to get it to stay where we want it to. So there's a lot of work to get these in, but man, are they pretty. Uh, this is a cast iron grate for a catch basin, but on the other side of this pile are the small catch, uh, cast iron grates for the trench drains. And they're pretty and they're robust and they're heavy duty. Obviously you could drive all over them and it's gonna save this house and just do the right thing for the driveway from a drainage perspective. All right, so we're over here at the garage. We showed you the trench drains at each of those big precast units. And I wanna show you what this looks like over here. You have a nice straight saw cut line. This is the original slab under the garage floor. You can see how the guys worked and they just neatly pulled the existing asphalt away without damaging the slab or cutting it or scarring it. So they're doing a nice neat job. We're already down below the asphalt into process, which is laid down underneath the asphalt driveway. And they're gonna to start to dig to create a trench for us. In this particular house, we have these columns these square columns. They're decorative. They don't really support the house, but they, they look nice. So, you know, we have to kind of jog around them, but that's not our intention. We're going to cut again, and we're going to set our drains out here. And what we'll wind up doing is, with the homeowner's approval, using a Belgium block to create a border between our trench drain and the entry to the garage. Much like the border you see elsewhere on this driveway. It'll make, it makes sense. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to look beautiful and everything will tie in nicely.